So how long is this job seekers buying market gonna last? We'll stick around because in this video, I'm gonna share with you how long I think the good times are gonna continue to roll. Hey everybody, it's Brian from Life After Layoff, and today I wanna to share with you my thoughts on how long I think we're gonna be in this job seekers, buyers market. And as a corporate recruiter, I am seeing the labor market firsthand from both the employer and the employee's perspective. And let me tell you, I've never seen times like this before. But before we get too far into it, if you're interested in more videos just like this one, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you won't miss another post. You can also find me over on TikTok. I just started a new account and would love for you to follow me there. And I'm going to answer a lot of your questions over there in short form video. You don't want to miss that as well. All right, so what's going on in the job market? Unless you've been living under a rock, you know that we have been in a job seeker buyer's market for quite some time. And in fact, it's only seeming to continue to heat up. And I would say it's probably been going strong and steady since at least the beginning of 2021. You might even argue that we saw some signs of it happening in 2020, the very tail end. And the question has to be brought up of how long can we reasonably expect to stay in a buyer's market for the job seeker? Because as we well know, things can shift very quickly in the job market. So I wanted to share with you some pretty eye-opening statistics that I've discovered as I've dug into this question a little deeper. And then also share with you where I think that the job market is headed going into, now we're approaching the end of the year, going into 2022. Now we've all seen the telltale signs of it being a buyer's market. If you're on LinkedIn, you're probably getting hit up constantly from recruiters asking you to join their team. And just about any place that you frequent is hiring, or in some cases, places are actually closing down because they can't find enough staff. Of course, we're seeing wages increasing across the board. People are dangling big sign-on bonuses to join. And in some cases, fast food restaurants are paying more than even teachers' salaries, which in and of itself is a whole other subject for a whole other day. Fact of the matter is we are absolutely in a high-speed job market right now, and surely things can't stay the same forever. But according to a recent article on Forbes, new jobless claims fell to the lowest level in nearly 52 years, which means there's been the lowest level of unemployment claims since the Beatles were topping the charts, which is pretty crazy considering the number of jobs that are still unfilled. So you gotta wonder, where are all these people? So according to bank rate analyst Mark Hemrick, he's calling the unexpected decline truly significant evidence that the labor market has further improved and we should be seeing this continued job market growth for the foreseeable future. So what that means is that we're gonna to continue to see more and more jobs added and still probably not enough people to fill them. So what does that tell you? We're gonna to continue to be in a buyer's market. And what is particularly interesting about this is that as recently as September, there was some signs that the market was significantly softening. In fact, they only added 200,000 jobs in September when they were anticipating well over a million. So there's just less jobs in the economy. There's obviously going to be more competition for those jobs. And then it becomes a much more competitive market, but that didn't last very long. And things rebounded quicker than expected because in October, the U S economy added 530,000 new jobs, which was the best month since July. Coupled with supply chain issues, people being completely overworked and people simply leaving their jobs, the problem of not having enough people to fill these jobs is a real thing. So what does this mean for the average job seeker? Now, I'm not an economist, so I can only go off of my personal experience, but companies are absolutely struggling to hire people right now. It's completely slanted towards the job seeker, and I'm not seeing any signs of it slowing down. So I fully expect to see a continuation of the job seeker buyer market well into 2022. Because remember folks, we're still in the middle of a great resignation period. And in fact, according to the labor department, a record 4.4 million people or 3% of the workforce quit their jobs voluntarily in September, which has created a near record 10.4 million job openings. So essentially what this is saying is, is that people have a high degree of confidence that they can quit their job and not only find something to replace it, but actually find something better. Now, obviously the job market has staged a remarkable comeback from spring of 2020. And if you were somebody that was unfortunate enough to be on the receiving end of a layoff during that period of time, one can't help but wonder if there's a little bit of karmic payback for all those companies that were too quick to cut their staffs and now we're begging for them to come back. And what people are also finding in this great resignation period in this extreme buyer's market is that the barrier to entry for opportunities that they would have otherwise been screened out for are now a possibility. If you're somebody that was underpaid or in a situation that was less than ideal, you're finding that there's a lot more opportunities to drastically improve your financial standing because companies are increasingly having to incentivize people to join their teams in the form of higher wages 
dangling big sign-on bonuses and other incentives to stay competitive. What I'll tell the average job seeker is that there's probably never been a better opportunity than right now to improve your situation and find the best possible opportunity. If you're somebody that has stayed in the same organization for a long period of time and has gotten stagnant, I did make a video about why a steady job is bad for your career, and I would highly suggest that you check it out. And if you're somebody that's in a situation where you're not being paid fairly, you're in a toxic work environment, or the company isn't valuing you, there are plenty of other great opportunities out there with companies who are desperate to hire. So treat yourself like a free agent. It's time to upgrade your skills, get out there, and find the best possible opportunity for you, because you may not have another opportunity like this one. But if you find yourself not prepared for that and you think you need a little bit of help, that's actually something that I specialize in. I do have a website called alifeafterlayoff.com. It's loaded with tips and tricks all from an insider's perspective. And I do have some of my deepest and most intimate knowledge in the form of some training courses. The first one is called Resume Rocket Fuel, which is designed to teach you how to write a resume that's gonna give you the best chance of getting noticed by that recruiter, ultimately to get that first round interview. And once you get that first round interview, it's up to you to sell yourself throughout the rest of the process so that you can ultimately land your dream job. And that's where the ultimate job seeker bootcamp comes in because it's going to give you tips and techniques on how to ace each step of that interviewing process and ultimately land that dream offer. Hey, I appreciate you watching. If you found value in this video, sure would appreciate that thumbs up because that really does help the algorithm get this out to a broader audience and happy job hunting. We'll see you on the next one.